ABC West here checking in with a brand new episode of the Vinyl Survivor. Hope everyone's having a great day, great night, whenever it is you're watching this. I just want to welcome you back to the Vinyl Survivor series. If you're new to the channel, the Vinyl Survivor series is where I talk about albums that were new to me. Uh, albums that I brought in from either thrift store shopping, record shows, record stores, mail order, uh, just the new stuff that I sort of work through. Any, everything that ends up back here in the collection has to be listened to first, so I don't file anything away until it's been listened to and it's, I've decided it's something I want to keep. So this is where I sort of talk about uh, what I think of each thing and let you know whether they're staying here in the collection or going away for me. And it's been quite a while since I've done one of these episodes and and the, uh, the backlog of stuff I have to talk about for the Vinyl Survivor series has kind of kind of gotten out of control. I have one of those uh, fabric bins that, that's designed to slide in and out of an Expedit cube. Um, I have one of those that I sort of keep things that I've listened to and I'm ready to talk about in a Vinyl Survivor episode. And I keep those in one of those bins and I have overflowed that bin. Uh, so I've just, it's just gotten out of hand. So for the next few episodes, I'm gonna try to make these a lot shorter. I'm not gonna do as much research. It's been a while since I've listened to a lot of these things. So I'm just gonna kind of give a thumbs up, thumbs down on things, give you a quick look at it and a quick description of it. And that's gonna be that for the next few episodes. Uh, so I can get out, try and get out one of these a week maybe and try to get caught back up with uh, with the vinyl uh, vinyl survivor series, so let's go ahead and get into this episode. It's already getting longer. Uh, first thing I have here is an R and B album from the '80s. Uh, this is Roachford, self-titled, um, on the Epic label from 1986, I believe is the date on this one. It's 1988, actually, is the date on this one. Uh, really cool. I was expecting this to be... I wasn't expecting much from this, really. This was a dollar bin pull. Uh, really good musicianship on here, even though it's an 80s album, and it does have slight a slight amount of an 80s production to it. It's not overdone. Uh, it sounds really good. It has a really nice sound to it, and I uh, really enjoyed this. I think the hit on here was uh, Give It Up. There's a photo of Roachford. Some lyrics on the back. I said on the epic label really really it, I was I was shocked by this I was surprised by how much I liked it and it's going to be staying in the collection this one definitely gets a thumbs up from me next thing is another dollar bin find uh, sort of uh, I guess you call this English folk rock here this is McGinnis and Flint uh, they are on the capital label don't remember the date on this one I believe it was 69 somewhere around there this is a gatefold uh, yeah liked it liked it a lot some nice as I said some English folk rock kind of stuff uh, more on the folksy side I would say than rock capital green lime green label enjoyed it quite a bit gonna be keeping an eye out for an upgrade copy this one's a little rough but it is it is playable it is listenable uh, so I'm gonna keep it for now so that one gets a thumbs up as well Continuing on in the dollar bin finds, I have a UK pressing of a Tamla Motown compilation. This is Tamla Motown Volume 2. Um, lots of great artists on here. You got the Supremes, the Jackson 5, the Temptations, Marvin Gaye, Edwin Starr, Four Tops, Diana Ross and the Supremes, Smokey Robinson. Uh, Stevie Wonder, The Spinners, Junior Walker and the All Stars, a group called The Originals, produced by Marvin Gaye, which I wasn't familiar with, but a uh, really nice UK Motown comp here. Uh, definitely enjoyed hearing these songs. And, you know, Motown is kind of a singles, singles labels, uh, particularly. So, and actually, this is a German pressing. I don't know why I said UK pressing. Uh, this is a German pressing on the Motown label, Black and Silver. Motown label so that was nice uh, nice find for a dollar and it's really cool to get uh, a UK or a foreign pressing of a uh, American sort of release so that one was nice gets a thumbs up from me next thing still in the dollar bin this is an album from 1985 it looks like from Bob Dylan this is his album titled Empire Burlesque I uh, like this one quite a bit, actually. I've just a lot of great artists on here. Sly and Robbie are on here. You get uh, Ron Wood, Ben Montench. Uh, really nice, really nice songs from Bob Dylan. Really good, really good musically and lyrically as well, of course, being Bob Dylan. Of course, on the Columbia label there. 
So yeah, Empire Burlesque by, by Bob Dylan is thumbs up for me, staying in the collection. Another one from the dollar bin at Arrow's Aim. This is Randy Weston, piano jazz uh, music piece on the PA USA label. Uh, really good piano jazz, really nice and pleasant and enjoyable, uh, re really nice and moody. Cool gatefold on this one. Really enjoyed that. Is the PA USA label on this? Uh, yeah, really nice solo piano jazz type stuff. I do enjoy that sometimes. It's really nice to put on when you're kind of in a mellow kind of mood, and uh, that was a good one. So, thumbs up. It's staying in the collection. Uh, next up is a classic that doesn't need much introduction. This is Santana, self titled. Nice gatefold on this one. Uh, yeah, just classic, you know, <laughs> awesome jazz rock from Santana. Latin jazz rock kind of stuff. Really cool. Uh, always enjoyable to my ears. So that one is staying in the collection. I think I have a, at least one other copy of this in the inbox somewhere. Maybe that'll be an upgrade to this one. This one's a little rough, but uh, for a dollar, I'm going to keep it. And the last one it looks like from the dollar bin is a greatest hits compilation of Gil Scott Heron, the best of Gil Scott Heron. Uh, I believe he did this in 85. But this also features a new track that was never before released titled Rerun, uh, which is kind of a political commentary on Ronald Reagan. Uh, really cool, really dug it a lot. And Gil Scott Heron is just awesome. You know, you got Revolution Will Not Be Televised, The Bottle, Winter in America, uh, Ain't No Such Thing as Superman. Uh, just, yeah, killer stuff, killer political commentary type stuff from Gil Scott Heron. And it was cool to cool to pick up this greatest hits to have. Is I don't have a lot of just straight up albums from him. I have his last album and I have The Revolution Will Not Be Televised, which is also a compilation, but an earlier compilation uh, from him. But really cool to have this newer, later compilation. Um, there is a picture of the man himself and you get all the lyrics as well, which is nice. This is on the Arista label. Do like that label quite a bit. Another winner in my book. This one gets a thumbs up as well. It's staying in the collection. It's Gil Scott Heron, the best of Gil Scott Heron, 1985 ish sometime. Next up, something not from the dollar bin. I believe this was a Discogs pickup. I guess technically the second LP from the Bronski beat. This is Truth Dare, Double Dare. 1986 is the date on this one. Uh, Jimmy Somerville had left at this point, I believe. Yeah, Jimmy Somerville is out and John John is in. Uh, so kind of a not the same sound as the initial Bronski beat are the lyrics on this one. This one is on the MCA Forbidden Fruit label here in the US, MCA London and Forbidden Fruit. Um, just a US pressing of the album. Uh, yeah, definitely not the Bronski beat that Initially blew up on the scene with the you know all those great tracks from the uh, from the the Age of Consent album. So yeah, this is kind of just sort of a collector's piece to have as a piece just to have. Not not real great though. It it kind of went downhill after Jimmy Somerville left. Nice piece and it's staying in the collection. Next up, which I think is their actually technically their second release, but it's an album of remixes from the Age of Consent. This is Bronski Beats Hundreds and Thousands. Uh, you got the remix of Heat, Heat Wave, Why, uh, Hard Rain, Small Town Boy, Junk. This is from 1985 is the release on this. Don't know the whole story behind this release as the, you know, as the band sort of broke up or Jimmy Somerville left the band. Uh, I guess the record company wanted to capitalize and they did this remix album sort of thing. Um, again, on the MCA London Forbidden Fruit label, hundreds and thousand Bronski beat remixes of stuff from the Age of Consent. Uh, good stuff, good remixes, uh, enjoyable to hear. Uh, and uh, this one's a thumbs up again, staying in the collection. And last but not least, a bit of modern folk music. Uh, this is Madison Ward and the Mama Bear Skeleton Crew. Uh, this was sent to me a year or so ago now by the Vinyl Monkey Record Subscription Service. So this is an exclusive uh, release for them, I believe. Really good. Took me a little while to get into this. This is uh, a duo. 
sort of folksy, bluesy kind of stuff. Uh, took me a little, as I said, it took me a little while to get into it, but I really dug this after a while after listening to it. It's on the Glass Note label, released in 2015. Kind of very foot stompy, blues, folky kind of stuff. Um, photo there and some liner notes. It comes on a pretty cool orangish yellow vinyl, very, very brilliant, brilliantly colored. Uh, pressed at United Records, but it is uh, done pretty well. I don't see any orange peel or non-fill. Uh, pretty nice pressing from them. So at first, I was a little bit, took me a little while to get into this, but once I sort of got what they were doing and sort of got into the groove of it, and uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. So this one is going to be uh, sticking around. Thumbs up on this one as well. That is the final one. Actually, I also got a, an autographed 8x10 kind of thing here. Well, there they are there. Oh, that's Mama Bear and Madison Ward. Cool little extra that comes with the, uh, if you do the Vinyl Monkey subscription service, they have autographed, they usually have an autographed print by the band themselves, which is really cool. Uh, so that's going to do it with this episode of the Vinyl Survivor. Hope you enjoyed it. It's a little rough getting back into these. Hopefully this one was a little bit shorter and I can sort of plow through a couple episodes of this and get caught back up and get this bin back under control. Uh, so thanks for watching. Have a great day, great night. Please subscribe for more vinyl videos and we'll see you again next time. Cheers.